Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be talking about the string data type, Oh yeah. As you can see, string is part of the reference types category in contrast to the value types category. So far, we've basically talked about simple types. Well, string is unique in that functionality wise, it basically works like one of the simple types, but it's categorized under the reference types. And this is more about the behind the scenes stuff. So when we're working with a string, it's going to feel exactly like the simple types, but technically it's actually a reference type. This largely determines how variables are passed around. Typically value types are stored on what's known as the stack and reference types are stored on what's known as the heap. Generally, we keep the stack pretty thin, but strings can become pretty big, so we put them on the heap. That's part of the reason why it's a reference type. So it's mainly a storage and performance thing, not so much a functionality thing. So if you really have no idea what I'm talking about, it's okay, I don't really either. So let's just dive into the code and see how things work. And I notice I start every video with diving in, so <laughs> there's just a lot of diving going on here. So I'll try to come up with some new words maybe. Let's just, uh, let's, you know, let's sweep in and start coding. <laughs> so lame. All right, but first I wanted to say a special thank you to monday.com for sponsoring this series. I encourage you guys to check them out. I'll leave a link for you in the description. Monday.com is a great way to organize your work. It's a project management solution where you can put your tasks inside of a board and you can label them however you want. This is a great way if you need to keep track of what's in progress, what's being blocked, and what's done. So even if you're not in a team environment and you're working for a school project or you're just trying to keep track of your life, I'd highly recommend Monday.com. I've been using all kinds of different project management solutions for even my YouTube channel here and some of my personal projects. And let me tell you, it's super, super, super helpful. Highly, highly recommend it. <laughs> so I think you guys get the point. Check them out. They're awesome. Now let's get started. So string data types, very simple. You say string name. I mean, you can name it whatever you want. And you put a value inside of double quotes. Now strings are immutable. And what exactly does that mean? Well, anytime you do an operation on a string that makes it look like the string is changed, well, behind the scenes, that original string is just thrown out and a new one is given to you. So if I do something like this, this is going to concatenate or basically attach this curry to the name variable. So when we go in here and write this name, it prints Caleb Curry. It's kind of confusing because my username is Caleb Curry, but the one with the space is what's being printed here. And the original string, Caleb, and this string curry are not really a thing anymore. It's just Caleb curry and that's the only string that exists. This might come back and bite you if you do something like, let's say we have another string variable. Let me get rid of this here. Name two and we set that equal to name. And then what we do is we append to the original variable like so. What you might expect to happen is that both name and name two have Caleb curry. And that would make sense as a reference type. If you remember to an earlier example where we worked with arrays, if you changed an array and you had multiple variables referencing that array, that change would become available to all variables that reference that array. But with strings, it's a little bit different. When we append curry to this, what's actually happening is we're generating a new string, Caleb space curry. We're not changing the original. So the original Caleb name no longer points to. So if we write these out and run it, what's gonna happen is that the first one has Caleb Curry, and then the second one still has Caleb. So it acts similar in nature to these simple types. So this is all good to know, but now I wanna just go through some other examples of how to work with strings. This is all very conceptual and might be useful for you later on, but as a beginner, you're probably just hoping to use the strings. So let's get rid of this and go through some other examples. First thing that's cool is if we have a character array, we'll be getting an array soon but it might look something like this, where each character is added to this array. Well, we can actually convert this to a string pretty easily by creating a string variable and then passing that array into what's known as the string constructor, which is just a method. So we can throw in characters here and you can see that greetings will be hello. So when we run this, you can see we get hello. So that's kind of cool. You might run into that sometime in your life. One of the most useful things with C Sharp is known as string interpolation. The way this works is if you create a string and before the double quotes, you put a dollar sign. Well, you can actually feed different variables in here. So you could say something like, hello, my name is, and then inside of curly braces, you can pass in name and you can keep doing this. 
and pass in greeting. Then all we have to do is output this. And when we output this, it basically fills out that string and says, hello, my name is Caleb, and I like to say hello. So that's really, really cool. There are various other ways to do similar things inside of C Sharp, but this is one of the most modern ways. It's the recommended way. I'd recommend doing it like so. So that is your introduction to string. In the upcoming videos, we're gonna be talking about some string methods and some string properties that are good to know and how to use them. It's gonna be really cool, so please subscribe if you've enjoyed this content, and I'll see you over in the next video.